Okrima Media in Johannesburg, I'm Sane Jamini, a well-known film producer. Anand Singh is in conversation with Quality about his book titled In Black and White. So many people took up the opportunity presented by Lockdown to Write. Was that what sprang into action for this book or was there another inspiration behind the creation of this book? Well, it, you know, it began firstly with with lockdown and looking at albums and looking at stories around my family, et cetera, um, and then trying to fill the gaps. And as I did that, I felt, well, maybe I should drop some pen to paper and fill the story uh, because my memory was sort of not totally perfect in uh, all of these. So I had to go and talk to family members, et cetera, and try and, um, and figure it out, uh, which was kind of useful because it allowed me the opportunity to reflect um, on the process and on my life, which was great. You grew up in Devon, in Reserva Hills, in a loving family. I just want us to discuss the role your father played in your life. He was the first doctor in your family, and he was actually the one who exposed you to films. Correct. He used to make uh, movies, you know, in those days, it wasn't video, it wasn't a phone, it was an actual camera. So you actually had to put a film in and it's not like, you know, the photo- photographic film. It was a one minute film and you put it into a video, not into what it feels like a video camera, but then it was a film camera and we used to make home movies. And uh, that was the beginning. And thereafter it became watching the silent movies that he would hire for us because we had no television. And uh, that was um, uh, the beginning of, the images and the comedy of Charlie Chaplin uh, and, you know, the funniness of all of that, that captivated me. And in the book, uh, we read that at the age of 20, you owned your own film rental store. For an Indian man living in the apartheid area, Mr. Singh, that's quite a feat. How did you manage that? Looking back again, it was fascinating because I was in university, um, I couldn't go to film school because the only film school in South Africa was for white people. And um, obviously that didn't work for me Um, because um, the next sort of challenge was what do I do? And my family were forcing me to go to university and I studied engineering because it was like, okay, this sounds interesting. And I hated it. And um, while I was doing all of that, I was continuing to work on film uh, in a film rental store, earning a rand a day. And so that was kind of where it began. And um, and as I progressed, um, the company that I was working at, um, I was getting now during holidays, 25 rand a week. and um, they said, well, we're, this business is too small for us. And um, you, we think we're wasting our time. We want to sell it. Why don't you buy it? So I said, hey, I've got no money and uh, I don't even have a bank account. And so they said, OK, well, if you want to buy it, we can find a way. We'll, you can pay us over 12 months and uh, we think you'll work hard and you'll pay for it. And I said, OK, well, let me go and figure it out. And I went to the dean of my faculty and he said, You've got five more years to study. In five years, maybe you'll get a job because in those days you had job reservations. So white people got a job before people of color in the engineering industry or many industries for that matter. And so I said, okay, well, I'll take my chances there and, um, and film. And if it doesn't work out, I'll come back. Uh, that was the sort of beginning of, my film career and the challenges were many because the place where the shop was and that we were renting out 16 millimeter big real films and projectors because there was no television and the, the, the shop was in a white area because in those days where you lived, where you traded, where you went to movies, where you worked, everything was segregated. So I then um, had to get a a white friend of mine to put his name on the lease and the contract uh, because that was the only way I could do it. And um, and that guy is still a friend of mine to this day. And so it was fascinating in that process. But 
I figured I had nothing much more to lose, so I'll take my chances. And in the book, you also try to address the issue of entrepreneurship. And you tell us a story about how your grandmother used to give people in your community food from her garden at times for free, but you wanted her to sell it. Tell us about that. Yeah, and again, you know, I have sort of part memory, part I had to piece together because family members told me this, that, and the other. But clearly, uh, the idea idea of entrepreneurship, because my grandmother was like the feeding bowl for the community there. If anyone was hungry, they came to see her. She always had something for them. She would plant uh, vegetables and all of that kind of stuff and would give it to the community. So, you know, at one point I said, well, you know, I guess I didn't remember this, but I, I was told by my aunt that I said, no, no, let's, you need to sell these, you know, why, why are you giving it away? Anyway, she disagreed with me, but um, we continued to give it away, but I used to deliver it. So I guess obviously there was a commercial entrepreneur in me from the beginning. You also write about the challenges, Mr. Singh, of being a black person in the film industry during the apartheid era. You produced the first anti-apartheid movie that was shot in our country. How did you navigate that? Well, you know, it was very much a situation where um, the ANC was largely in exile. Uh, Madiba was in prison. All Everybody, you know, that we know that was incarcerated, way in prison, and they made a call to speak out against apartheid, whatever you can do. And for me, it was, okay, well, let's make a film. And Daryl Root was a director. He had written a script, and this was a very political script. And I felt this is very powerful and tells the story of South Africa in that day So this is mid-1980s, or about 85, and we were in the state of emergency. And uh, I said, okay, let's go make the movie. And Sinam Shlope was the lead actress. Uh, Patrick Shai was in it. You know, a whole beginnings of great creative talent um, was in this film. And we did it on the run from the police. We were shooting um, just for a week, and uh, we were harassed, and all of us were harassed. And um, we managed to get this film made. Obviously, the authorities wanted to see the film, but I, the day we finished shooting, I took it to London and put it in a laboratory there to be processed. But we were editing in Johannesburg in uh, Rocky Street. Um, but um, I had several incidents with police where they came to visit and asked, you know, asked other questions, etc. So that's how it began. And um, and then the, they, the cinemas in South Africa wouldn't play the film because obviously it's a political film and they were segregated and white owned big corporates. So it was no easy task, but finally we managed to prevail. And at the premiere in New York, Martin Luther King Jr. was there. Dick Gregory was there. Great. You know, Whoopi Goldberg had supported the film and, you know, really uh, Sidney Poitier. Um, so it was really um, a huge endorsement, not only by the cele- that celebrity community, but also by the media, because in the, the reviews were great from the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, who loved the film. And this was a film that was done for a tiny 50,000 Rand budget. And February 11, 1990, marked a very important day in our country's history when Nelson Mandela was released from prison. Uh, Through your films, Mr. Singh, you have tried to tell important South African stories that are socially relevant, uh, including the long walk to freedom, which has been enjoyed globally. These stories, they have been told so many times uh, through books and poems and other mediums. But seeing it in film is something different. Why is it so important for you to tell these stories? Well... You know, I think Madiba is an interesting case in point because I think the legacy and the celebration of his life and what he represented for us and our freedom um, as one individual, but obviously it is a, uh, a conglomeration of many people 
many uh, efforts uh, ar uh, all across the country and around the world that got us our freedom. But I was of the opinion that a story about Madiba should be made even while he was prison, in prison, because I was writing to him while he was in prison to try and make a movie about his life. At that point, there was a book called Higher Than Hope that was written by Fatima Mir, and I wanted to make a film of that. Um, and then, fortunately, um, I got to meet Madiba about two weeks after he got released, and we talked about the film, and he told me then that he had written the autobiography while in prison, and we decided to wait for that. But I never realized that it was going to take 25 years to make the film. But I'm very proud of the fact that we have a film document which represents the legacy of Madiba uh, to audiences over the past 10 years and beyond forever. Madiba was also a guest um, at your wedding. That must have been an honor. Tell us about that. Well, yes, uh, for, we, uh, my family and I are very fortunate that we've enjoyed a, a, fam a family friend relationship with him. And um, we decided to get married quite sort of late, let's say. Um, it was uh, the begin beginning of November and we were getting married six weeks later. Um, it wasn't a shotgun wedding, but uh, uh, we went to visit him and we said, I, we said to him, well, I'm get we're getting married in six weeks time and we'd here's our invitation. We'd love to have you there, but you're president of the country. And, um, um, you know, we know you're busy, et cetera, et cetera. And he said to my wife, no, I've been waiting for you to propose to, uh, to me, uh, to an aunt, and uh, I will definitely be there. And he was there and it was fantastic and, um, and great. And uh, I didn't have, I didn't want to have any media there. And then at one point, about a week before the wedding, he, people from his office call and say, look, you're not allowing media and um, the, everybody knows Madiba's coming to your wedding, you have to do something. So I said, well, if you insist, we'll do like a arrival room where we'll meet, Madi you know, we'll meet Madiba and you can take pictures and then the media must leave. And that's how it, uh, how it all transpired. You've also mingled with plenty of celebrities uh, as well as Quincy Jones, who actually wrote the foreword in your book. How did that friendship come about? So Quincy was a very active anti-apartheid supporter. And, you know, in the 80s, um, I used to go to L.A. Um, where he lived and um, I got introduced to him and we immediately hit it off. And um, he was um, very generous in his time and support of the work that I was doing. And, uh, you know, we got to know each other over those years and um, the friendship grew. So when he came to South Africa in 1991, um, I was just starting Sarafina, and he came with a whole group of American activists, and we did a function for Madiba and for that group with the Sarafina cast, and that was in Hillbrow, and you know, ever since then, that friendship grew even further. So I'm, I'm very proud that he agreed to do a, uh, uh, a forward to the book and, uh, uh, and, and thank him for his kind words. And lastly, uh, Mr. Singh, you've, you have vast experience and success in film and many people look up to you, especially as a person of color. What is your advice now to those who are up and coming filmmakers? Well, firstly, it, you know, you hear about the successes, uh, you hear about you know, film is something that seems sexy. You see the red carpet, you read about the actors and the celebrity, but it actually is hard work. So there's, there is no substitute for hard work and commitment. And with it comes a lot of failure, a lot of rejection. And that's why Mandela took 25 years to make, because I had maybe 10 writers, I had 80 scripts, I had 10 directors, so, and I was never comfortable that it was ready to make. And until that happened, you know, I kept on it. And what was great was that Madiba said to me at the time when he granted the rights, he said, um, show me for my weaknesses more than my strength. 
Now, for me as a filmmaker, that was great because a lot of people would say, no, no, don't show anything bad about me. But then I also said to him, look, this is a huge challenge and, it, and I'm honored to be doing it, but I, I'll take my time um, because I, it's got to be right. Every South African feels that Madiba's story is their story and they have an interest in it. So, you know, I had to get it right. And, um, and basically getting it right is just following my instinct because there's you, you know, you or someone else may think, no, no, that's not right. But, you know, and likewise with Winnie, I did the same thing. I had discussions with her. She was cautious. But at the end of the day, the important thing was that there was a trust. And for young people today, I think failure is actually a, n nothing to be worried about. You fail in order to improve and succeed. And I think from a standpoint of my book and the journey that I've experienced, and I hope that the book provides some tools of confidence and uh, ability for younger people to see how the film environment or any business for that matter worked in those days. And if they can be um, uh, able to read and be able to uh, get something out of it that helps them along their way, um, that I would be very pleased. But most importantly, they've got to follow their passion. I think one thing with lots of younger people is that their parents or their peers are pushing them to do things that those people want them to do or think they should be doing. And that often ends in disaster. So I do feel that like with me, when I wanted to open my first video store or film store, uh, my mother thought um, I was crazy. And she said to all the family members, no, he can't do that. He must stay in school, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, you know, I was uh, fortunately very headstrong and said, I'm going to do this. And if it doesn't work out, and they were all very worried, but it turned out okay. It was an unseen speaking to Krima Media's quality about his book titled In Black and White.